Hey y'all, Roxanne here. Welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to share a bit of my COVID slash long hauler story with you, but before we jump into that, a little disclaimer. So I wanted to do this video just to give people an update. Um, I think that if you know me in real life, somehow, maybe through social media, you know that um, I actually am a COVID long hauler, which means that I have been um, symptomatic or having some sort of symptoms related to COVID for at least two months. I'm actually probably about 10 months post infection. So I've been dealing with things for quite some time. Um, I think for a lot of people, this may be the first time that you're hearing about long haulers. Uh, I've seemed to talk to people all the time that don't know that we exist, but um, some of the stats that I've seen say that people who actually get COVID-19 about anywhere between 10 and I think the highest number I've ever seen is like 30% of people who are infected with the virus end up having some sort of long-term residual symptoms of some sort uh, from it. So I, um, I actually remember the day that I became symptomatic. It was in November of 2020. I was uh, working on my master's in social work. So I was taking classes online and I remember being on camera, looking at my camera and thinking, I cannot focus. <laughs> I cannot focus on what my professor is talking about. And I noticed that my head started to hurt, my eyes started to hurt. I started to get really tired, so much so that my professor actually noticed and asked me if I was okay. And I said, you know what, I don't think so. I think I need to get off the, this, I need to get off of the call. I need to, you know, take a step back from this class. And um, I actually skipped my next class and went and took a nap because I thought, oh, Oh, I must be coming down with a cold or something because I'd been really careful. I hadn't, um, I'd been working from home. I hadn't been going anywhere. I think at most I was going for walks in the park and maybe to the grocery store once a week or something like that. I wasn't like hanging out with people in large crowds, um, saw very few friends. So I was thinking there's no way that I have COVID. How could I have gotten it? Um, People ask me that all the time. How in the world did you get it? Um, I think it was somebody in my apartment complex. Long story short. Um, but I remember that day because um, I just felt like there's no way that I, could be, that, that I could be positive. So I ended up sleeping for the next, I would say five days or so, managed to take myself down to a COVID testing center. And I remember, I think the date was November 19th, um, that I got the results, that I was positive. And I cried. Um, I could not believe that I'd gotten it because I knew that if I got it, that I just, I wouldn't have any idea how I got it. So um, from there, I think I was probably symptomatic for about two weeks, like full on laundry list of the normal COVID uh, symptoms. I think the only ones that I did not have were uh, the loss of taste and smell. My sense of smell is horrible anyway, so I wouldn't have noticed that, but I never lost my sense of taste. But everything else that if you look at what are the symptoms of COVID, I had them all. I won't gross you out with that. Um, so had that for about two weeks, started to feel better, started to return to work part time, tried to get back to classes, but ended up having to take an incomplete in one of my courses. Um, and from there, I think... For another two weeks just kind of stuck it out thinking okay i'm just going to progressively get better like everybody else that i know who has gotten the virus but that didn't happen so about a month out i um, went to my doctor because i noticed that i was having shortness of breath and i was having this sensation that felt like i was like breathing through a straw um, and i just couldn't get enough oxygen but my pulse ox or not my pulse ox my sat my oxygen saturation levels were fine um never dipped below 94 and I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to go get checked out just because. And that visit to my PCP's office, not with my PCP, but with another person that was working the clinic that day, was pretty disastrous. They basically looked at me and said, oh, this is just normal. Um, you know, you should just continue to ride it out. You'll get better eventually. No. Um, 
So from there, uh, based on a lot of people becoming very angry when they heard about my experience there, uh, I ended up going to a post-COVID clinic at one of the hospitals in my city. And best decision ever. Holy cow, best decision ever. They did a bunch of tests to make sure that my heart was okay, that my lungs were okay, um, pulmonary function was okay. Uh, I was actually diagnosed with virus-induced asthma, so I started on the steroids, I started on the albuterol treatments, I started on the albuterol inhaler, um, and I noticed that, okay, I can, I can kind of breathe better, things are kind of getting better, but what about the rest of these symptoms that just won't go away? Uh, some of the more frustrating ones, I would say, are the fatigue. Um, I literally would be fine and then I would hit a wall and I would I would just have to go lay down regardless of what I had planned for the day regardless of if I had things to do at work um, I couldn't focus I couldn't I just couldn't stay awake so I would literally crash and burn and I would be asleep for three to five hours and um, wake up completely disoriented I had no idea that I'd even fallen asleep um, the other thing holy cow the brain fog uh, I don't know if you I don't know if I can adequately explain what brain fog feels like but um, for someone who uses their words a lot because I have a master's in communi in a communication field um, it's a lot of what I do for work uh, working in higher ed in education spaces um, I legit could not find words or I would randomly place words in sentences where they did not belong. My coworkers, they now call these fun dip moments because I would insert words like fun dip into a sentence where it didn't belong in front of a bunch of doctors. It's great. Um, the other thing is, you know, just looking at tasks and things that I did on a regular basis for the last three years for my job and having no idea how to do them. Um, something as simple as planning a meeting. I could not do it because I could not figure out how to get from point A to point B. Uh, there were other things that brain fog brought with it that were awesome, not awesome, um, including memory issues. I would have conversations with people and have no recollection of having those conversations. Um, there were there was just a host of things that cognitively were, I think that was the most disheartening part of my post-COVID journey. Um, and I say was because there's, there's something coming, spoiler alert. Um, I think the other thing that was really difficult uh, to process and deal with, sorry, I'm looking at my notes because sometimes I forget about that whole thing, um, is uh, something called dysautonomia. Uh, I know now that some people are seeing with COVID that uh, it's either POTS or slash dysautonomia. I had the dysautonomia part where basically um, my blood vessels did acted up. They didn't know what the heck to do. Uh, and they would like, my blood pressure would bottom out and I would pass out just cuz um, you know all of these things going on all at the same time just made a lot of people freak out and wonder okay I don't know if she's gonna be okay and I definitely don't know like should we all just come around her and put her in a house with somebody and you know help make life easier for her so I had a great team of doctors at this hospital the post-covid clinic um, they answered so many questions, were so patient, and did just a fantastic job of managing all of my symptoms and helping me figure out a way forward to a new normal. Uh, one of the ways that we talked at length about how I could possibly get better was through getting the vaccine. This is not a plug for vaccines. I honestly don't care what you do. This is what I had to do in order to try to get my body back on track. Um, so basically I took the vaccine in June and I noticed like some of my long hauler friends um, that my symptoms, oh, B. Sir, I need you to go away, I'm trying to film. Anyway, so I took the vaccine in June and I noticed almost immediately, I think that same day that my brain fog cleared. Several of my friends who got the vaccine before I did, who were infected before I was, they said that when they took the vaccine, it felt like a curtain had just been drawn away and all of a sudden the light, the sun was back in their lives. That is exactly what it felt like. It was like clarity returned in a way that I had been missing for months. And I cried again because Again, for me, words are really, really important. So being able to speak sentences, I, I would not have been able to do this during my acute phase. Like during the first few months, six months probably, post-COVID, 
I just couldn't do it. I couldn't form thoughts clearly enough to be able to talk to you like this. Um, that happened. I noticed that I wasn't sleeping as much. I wasn't as tired. My energy returned. I was having a slightly better time breathing, but I live at a pretty high elevation, so that's still kind of sticking around. Um, I just noticed almost a complete 180 in a lot of my symptoms, and I was just like, holy cow, that worked. Because the theory, at least according to my pulmonologist, was that the vaccine gave my body something else to fight besides itself. Um, and apparently that is what happened. I did notice, however, that after getting the second shot that some of my symptoms did come back. They didn't come back as strong, they weren't as aggressive, and they definitely weren't as frequent, but they kind of did come back. I would say that if I'm not really great with my sleep hygiene, I notice that um, my brain fog is worse. So if I'm like staying up late thinking that I can Netflix and chill at night, no, no girl, you need to go to bed. Uh, then I will notice that I'm paying for it the next day. The other thing that I've noticed is, um, I didn't talk about this before, but I would have issues on this side of my body. So on the left side of my body, my headaches were on the left side, my eye pain was on the left side, the tremors that I had in my hand, left side, um, a lot of the inflammation issues and joint pain, left side, hand and feet. So some of those things, mostly the inflammation in my hands and joints, um, that returned. I think uh, some of the other ones that I had, I did have an, like kind of a burst of, of fatigue one day um, when I was visiting my family in Texas where I was fine and I hit a wall and I was like, um, I'll see you guys later. And I slept for 15 hours. So that's only happened once though. Uh, and then I think the other thing, looking at the notes again, um, is the occasional headache. But again, I think that is also like things that I am doing that I need to, I need to make adjustments for. I am back in Colorado. Um, I think I mentioned that I spent about a month and a half in Texas with my family. Um, my pulmonologist here thought it would be a really good idea for me to get to a lower elevation and kind of de-stress and give my body time to recuperate, recover, and just be. So I did that and then I went on to Memphis, note the note the t-shirt, University of Memphis, um, where I went to college and hung out with some college buddies there. Um, great time, super fun being with you guys. Uh, and then I slowly made my way back to Colorado, which is where I live. And since I've been back, I've noticed that I do have the shortness of breath still, but I live at this elevation. So it takes time to adjust to that. So I've been taking my meds, my albuterol, and all of that good stuff, um, trying to get that under control. I've noticed that my body, though, feels a lot better. I don't have as much joint pain. I think it's the heat and humidity, but you guys know, if you know me well, you know how I feel about both of those things. Um, I don't have the headaches. I don't have a lot of the other things that were going on. So I'm in a really good space right now, which is really, really awesome. I'm really thankful, really blessed for that. Uh, and then as far as like what's coming up, um, I did have to take that medical leave of absence from school. So I won't be returning to my master's of social work program, probably probably until next year. I think we're, we're going to give it a try. Uh, I am no longer on the PhD track. I just don't think that my body can handle that level of stress. And then also just cognitively, my brain doesn't work the same anymore. So um, I'm not as sad about that as I thought I would be, which is really good. Um, and then as far as work goes, I'm back to working full time. Uh, I am in a different role, so I no longer manage education, looked for something that's a little bit less stressful within my team, and was blessed to be able to continue to work where I work with people that I love working with. For my next video, I think what I would like to do is talk about um, how COVID or being a COVID long hauler has changed my life and perspective. Some of those things are great. Some of them are really beneficial to me and I think will be beneficial to the community that I love as well. Some of them are pretty hilarious. Um, some have got me in trouble. Um, and you know, some are just life and adjusting.
If you've stuck around this long, thank you for doing so. I never in a million years thought that I would still be talking about COVID, long COVID, long hauler symptoms, all of that stuff, almost a year post-infection. Uh, it's definitely been a roller coaster ride as I've tried to figure out how to get myself back to health, but also a pretty steep learning curve because there is a lot of information out there. So I would love to keep sharing the things that I'm learning with you. Uh, if that sounds interesting to you, please subscribe. Uh, if you are or someone that you love is struggling with long COVID, um, I would love to hear about their story and how they're doing. So please leave a comment below. And uh, I think that's all I have for today. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.